We call this the Red Hills down here. Um, the fact of it is, the Red Hills, you gotta think about the clay, the red clay. These hills is made with the red clay. There's a spirit down here. That red, that spirit is red down here. You got to understand how all of this land was cultivated specifically for quail management. I think something about that clay being so red make a bird dog what it is. I think it gives bird dogs a spirit. I think it gives a bird dog some soul. Makes them a little more gritty. It makes them a little bit more mannerable on birds. They gotta figure it out. The Red Hills is important because it's a spirit down here. When I think about Thomasville, like what is Thomasville? Um, Thomasville is, is, I'm gonna just claim it, man. It's, it's, it's the, the epicenter, it's the heart of the bird dog world. Thomasville is, is really the establishment of, I think, what we understand bird dogs to be. You know, and, it, and, it, and it's where we see the most unified collective vision of an entire community of people that, that are 1,000% invested in the bird dogs. I think that, that the, uh, the plantation community grew up here after, in the late 19th century. Thomasville was a going social hub of winter uh, visitors because the train connected to, to Savannah. And I think that whole lively town uh, social scene was part of the attraction from northerners from whom I'm descended and uh, at about the same time they discovered that that was just the time when the cotton uh, farming had uh, was in trouble and plantations were broken up and there were small patch farms and that is just the kind of environment that the quail thrive in early succession vegetation stuff. I got a second one for you. I bought her from Love Ridge a couple weeks ago. Yeah. What we talk about here is being a dog man. And that term, I kind of think about it because I, I, as a kid, I grew up like loving cowboys, right? Like every, I think a lot of kids wanted to be cowboys and that was a thing. Like you, you were elevated, right? It was, it was a, it was a stature thing. Well, a dog man is the same way as a cowboy. Like a dog man is one word to me. It's its own specific thing. It's a gentleman that knows how to not only start a dog, but also finish a dog. But do it and develop a relationship with that dog. He's not just a tool anymore. Sure, he's getting the job done, but that's your partner, that's your companion, that is a tool. It is the expert in the woods. It's knowing when to put pressure on a dog, when to ease up off a dog. You know, it's knowing that not every bird dog trains the same. You know, being a dog man is what we're, we're talking about down here. And that there is the, the unique, very, very cent, uh, central driving ambition for so many people down here. Well, to me, to be a dog man, I was, uh, I would say three generations of my family. My grandfather was a dog man. I had 
an ultra adult man. And to come into this uh, profession, I've enjoyed it because I've sent my kid through school, some of them through college, doing the same thing. And it's just a thrill to work adult, with, as I would say myself, because you got a lot of hard work, Mr. Chaper will tell you, sometimes make you pull your hair out your head, you, you holler, you give them different names and stuff, y'all don't want to know. <laughs> but uh, once you get that dog broke, and just sit on that horse and watch that dog go out there and do what you done trained. And it's just a thrill to me. I, I watch him over and over. I can't wait some more days to just get out there and turn that dog loose and let him go. The reality of it is black people were never ever going to own bird dogs. We, we were not allowed to, but we could be scouts. Well, if you look on a plantation and you realize that working in the field, field hands were a dime a dozen. They were very disposable. But bird dogs were specialized labor, no different than a carpenter no different in a welder, you know, things like that. Bird dogs were a very specific piece of, of, of labor in the, in the labor component of plantations. Yeah, I got everything. Sure. Another dog from Curtis. So you get the interest uh, in taking a, a, a much more specialized and highly regarded position within a community of people that were just trying to get away from oppression. It was early stability, you still got a job, and you got a chance to create a bond and a relationship with a dog. And honestly, those dogs, quite frankly, were security. After the Emancipation Proclamation, it made sense to have a dog because you could guide hunts. That's money in your pocket. Or you can go on public lands and you can hunt for yourself. So there were so many benefits to owning a dog and on the plantation, it made way more sense to be a dog man because it was financial stability. The relationship between the owners and the, and, and the residents here of these plantations, it varies from, from owner to owner. There's a lot of good folks like Mr. Chapin that was just as invested in his employees and the people that lived here, you know, as he would be anybody else that may look like him. They were very close and, you know, People saw each other as people and not always in the racial divide. When you have an owner that is just as invested in their dogs, yeah, sure, they're gone for half the year. That's fine. But when they come back, they want to learn about the dogs. They want to handle dogs. They, they take these dogs up with them up north. They have a relationship in the same capacity as the black dog man that ran these plantations. That's where Mr. Chapin comes in. I think he was a model example of the bridge between the owner and the dog man. There's nothing like getting out there, running your dog, and sometimes yelling and screaming and seeming to no effect. Because, and you know that all the people behind you are looking at you and you feel very much on the spot. Uh, that's something that I think owners should appreciate what the everyday dog handlers are up against when they're out there uh, with all eyes on the back of their head. When you live in a community of people together and work together to, to, for, for one common goal, you're on the same page. You're kind to each other. They're neighbors at that point. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, I'm not running behind these little wild dogs, but y'all can't help me. <laughs> I'm not running behind these wild dogs. You know what though? 
I, I, you know what I do? He keep. Uh -uh, I, I ain't moving. My hey, back hey, is Hey, Ross Gray, y'all. If I really know he really want to run against me, hey, really? <laughs> really? If I know he really want to run me, I'd have brought, I'd have brought Big Boy. You didn't bring him because you were scared. scared. So, <laughs> you didn't bring that dog because you were scared. Hey. Oh, this is a pot. I'm running again. <laughs> Look, you brought, a, you, brought, you brought a young dog. That way, when I woof up on you, got an excuse. <laughs> I think the brotherhood aspect, it's about the yin and yang of everything. Because your brother can tell you when you're doing wrong. You can fight your brother. But you can also shake your brother's hand when he was right. You got to have a brother to tell you when you're not on track. When you spend so much time walking around in these woods, you don't think that people get connected with each other. They develop relationships. They talk about each other's woes. They talk about each other's achievements. They talk about everything that's going on in their life. Bird dogs is way more than just looking at a dog running through the woods. You know what that, what your brother is struggling with, with a dog and with his family or with his job and with his life. The woods is a sanctuary, man. You got to open up and be honest with God. And like, if you can't do that with somebody else that you walk through the woods, then we, we, we don't have a tradition. And that's why the brotherhood aspect is so important is we keep each other accountable and we care about each other. Doesn't matter about no race. I want to figure out what to do. Has everything to do with standing with another man or woman I think it was and caring about them. Brotherhood with the guys running this area now is just like family, you know. And, um, and then we got a lot of young guys coming into our club, and and Neil and Curtis and Joe Fryce and all of them trying to make us understand what where we came from, where we at today, and them them older guys teaching us. And I'm I'm getting up there. I'm, I'm past the hundred now, so I could say myself getting an older guy and. And we got a lot of young guys coming in and, and we try to show them that we love them. We want them to enjoy what they do. And, and it is just like a family. This new generation, my generation, right? Like I'm, I'm coming in, I'm, I'm more or less learning from Neil, Curtis, everybody else down here, Mr. Fryson. Um, you got Lil Curtis, Curtis Jr. <laughs> learning from his father. <laughs> What'd you learn from your dad? Learn from my dad? Well, shoot. It started out um, when I was a little baby though. We stayed on, um, I grew up on Seminole Plantation. My dad used to always go to um, the field trials and everything. And I used to always go, like to go and ride with him and stuff on, at the trials. Really, that's how, about how it all started though. The horses and dogs riding through the woods. I just fell in love with it from, from there, and she would just kept, kept going with it, really. We're seeing how cool these folks look, man. It's like knowing Michael Jordan and seeing and having a relationship with Michael Jordan. When you see your father do something and work so hard to continue a tradition, why would you as the son let that fall short? And then when you grow up with dogs, dogs make us as men more human. Why would you want that to go anywhere? And why would you want something as angelic as a dog to fall short of anything less than great. This that y'all are in, to me, is kind of like a sanctuary. And when we're talking about black folks in the South, a lot of us are inherently very, very, very spiritual. And because of that, I guess I correlate it to being in church, like out here. Um, the woods kind of surround you. You know, piney woods, you got longleaf pines all over the place, loblollies here and there. You got quail somewhere in here. But it's a song and dance, man. Um, I guess it's kind of like a song and dance with God is, is kind of how I see it. I think the future of dog handling is just fine. I feel like the mentorship of people, the willing mentorship of people like Neil, I think all of this stuff comes full circle. 
I think once you start to see the whole gamut of everything that we're doing, all the breadcrumbs leading to a better future, I feel optimistic about it, but I only feel optimistic because right now in 2021, we have people that are willing to use newer technologies, um, more methods of communication to get these ideas versus way back in the day when these, these platforms weren't available. But it's only going to continue if people see some of the other works that so many of us are doing and join in. Now, if there's no collective effort, then it's all gone. But right now, I'm seeing a collective effort and a collective interest. Come on. This is for my free men whose backs won't bend in the lion's den. Now with the eyes on the end, end. This is for my free women who fight with their love. The barriers of our children. Free men whose backs won't bend in the lion's den. Now with the eyes on the end, end. This is for my free women who fight with their love. The barriers of our children. We Shine like lights exposing what lies underneath decomposing. Do I want to be a dog man? Hell yeah, I want to be a dog man. <laughs> After I saw Neil and Curtis, man, I can sit here and get to chopping at the bit with Curtis and, and, and talking all kind of trash. But man, that old Curtis Brooks is everything that I want to be about a dog man. And that god dang Neil Carter is the best dog man I never met. Why would I not want to be like him? Why would I not want to take his methods and, and make them my own? I want to be a dog man because it, it helps me be a better family man, be a better father, be a better teacher, be a better artist. Working dogs, working bird dogs is an art. I'm an artist myself. So hell yeah, I want to be a dog man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how you know when you're a dog, man. I think it. I think so. When Curtis started getting to shaking in his britches, I think that's when, when when I'm a dog, man. Curtis, that was for you. That's for you shaking your britches. Last question: Who gonna win, me or you? And who you gonna run against, my Vegas? As a right now, I'm not gonna say who gonna win, me or you. I'm not gonna tell you who I'm gonna run. Like they say, it's just going to be a straw in the hat toss-up. But all I can tell you, when I come, just be ready. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that, it. That was good enough? Yeah, yeah that was good. good. All, right, all right. I think you were doubting yourself, man. You think that was enough? I think so. <laughs> just a little bit. A little bit. You were good. <laughs> you were good, man. Yeah. Man, I'll beat you, I'll beat you at I, night. Out of nine dogs, come to my kill and pick out one. I'll pick out any of them. And I'll beat every last one of your dogs up. I'll beat every last one of your dogs up.